Hello, this is Bouter at RetroFitLab.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to retrofit the, LED uh, the headlights of the Porsche 996.1 or the Porsche 986 uh, headlights, uh, the halogen headlights of course only. So if, here you can see the standard uh, stock OEM headlight and this is a, a retrofitted headlight with uh, one of our kits. So we're going to use a bracket to replace the entire reflector unit. Uh, not only does it look a lot better, as you can see here, but uh, also um, the light output will be much better. So you'll have a lot more, uh, a lot better uh, light during the night, well, at nighttime driving. So what we need to do is first we're going to open the headlight and then we need to take out the reflector and then after that we're going to use the, um, the bracket to mount uh, the new projector and then again we have to close the headlight. This specific headlight is made by Bosch and um, it has uh, a perma seal so that means uh, the sealing is uh, a bit more difficult uh, to, uh, to open but uh, still it can be done. I'll show you how it's done. So what we need to do first is, uh, is warm up the headlight. For that uh, I have a box here. I'll, I'll take the headlight and put it in a box. It's uh, just a, a normal cardboard box. I'll close the box and then I have a heat gun and I'll put it on the lowest uh, setting that's like 300 degrees, degrees Celsius. And this way the headlight will warm up. So I'll leave it here for like uh, 15 to 18 minutes and then uh, we'll see uh, if the headlight is warm enough so uh, that we can open uh, the headlight, uh, open the ceiling and then uh, from there we start to retrofit the headlight. So the headlight has been in the oven now for like uh, 18 minutes. So I'm going to switch off the heat gun and then uh, we're going to uh, see if, we're going, uh, if, we, if I can open it in one run or maybe I'd, Need to put it another time in the oven. Let's uh, let's check. I feel the heat coming out of the box. So I have removed the rubber strip here. You can simply remove it by these two screws and then take it off. Uh, be a bit gently on these uh, headlights because uh, you know they, they are already more than 20 years old so things can be a little bit brittle uh, but still you can use some force to open the headlights what I'm going to use is only a, uh, a flat screwdriver and uh, this tool uh, which I can uh, uh, put between the, the lens and the housing to, uh, to open it so first I need to find a spot. Where I can open it. So on this piece the ceiling is now loosened, but still we need some more space.
so you will need to use some force here but you don't have to be scared that the housing will break it's quite uh, quite strong So this section is now already loosened, opened. Now we just need to work a little bit higher. Yeah, now it's coming apart more easily. This side. Now we can use this, maybe. There it comes. Sometimes it's difficult to get a screwdriver under it. Try to break the ceiling here.
I think the ceiling has cooled down a little bit, so I'm going to heat it a little bit more. Huh? So we've been working on the headlight for a couple of minutes, so now it cooled down a little bit. So I'm going to heat it a little bit more, so that the ceiling softens. Still only from here to here, where it's not open yet. Since there are some corners here, it's a bit more difficult. Just move the heat gun, don't keep it on one uh, part all the time because then it will be too hot. Now I have the heat gun on the highest setting, that's like 500 degrees Celsius. So, of course that will melt the housing if you uh, put it in one area for too long. So just move it around like this. Feel with your hand. If it becomes almost too hot to touch it, then it's warm enough. So the lens is now separated from the housing. So what we're going to do first is um, we're going to um, uh, remove the insert, just two screws here. And um, we're going to take off the reflector. First I'm going to let the housing cool down a little bit more. So I'll be back with you in a second. So now, um, before we continue the retrofit, first I'll show you how to uh, remove the, the old ceiling, this perma seal. It's like uh, it's like a little bit of uh, rubber. So you can uh, remove it with a screwdriver. You can just get it out like this. You make sure you remove as much as possible. You can also use a blade to cut it which makes it easier to remove or you can use a tool like we sell which is easy to, to cut the ceiling out of the channels so in this uh, Porsche 996 headlight you have to uh, be a little bit careful because there are some small notches here. Here's one. Here's another one. So if you're just doing like this, you might break one. So be careful. You need to go over it and then remove it. So that's the procedure. And you have to go around the entire channel. You have to remove as much uh, ceiling as possible before we put the new ceiling after we have finished um, replacing the reflector. Also you need to check the, the lens. There's also ceiling left here. As you can see and you can also just simply cut this. And again make sure you remove as much as possible. So yeah, that takes a little time, but it's not difficult to do. 
So I'm going to finish that up and then I'll show you the next step. So now the next step is to remove the reflector. It's held by three ball joints. There's one here, one here and one on the bottom on this side. Um, these are plastic joints so it can help to uh, warm them up a little bit with the heat gun. It makes them a, a bit more flexible. If you want you can do this step also before you remove the ceiling because then it's still warm because you've been warming up the headlight to open it. Um, so let's, uh, let's warm it up and see how it comes off. Use a screwdriver. That's one. And the last one. So here you can see the three joints. Here's one ball. The other two balls are there. One's here, one is here. This is where the other ball goes in. So what we need to do is we need to uh, remove these through joint uh, parts because we need to use these on the bracket. So this is the bracket that is going to replace the entire reflector. So the bracket, uh, this was the reflector, this will replace the, uh, the, the reflector. So we're going to mount these on the reflector using the hardware which is included in the kit. So we have here some spacers, washers, uh, screws and nuts. So first let's start with these, we will not need these screws anymore. So we'll start um, with this one. We'll need a 20 millimeter uh, space for this. I need 
make another tool for that. Oh, we have an 8mm tool here. Right, it's fixed. This will need to go up. Use a black screw here. 12 millimeter. And then on this side, here we're going to use a 30 millimeter plus 20 millimeters. So this is a 50 millimeter spacer. We have here. Put the washer and the nut. Again, the 12 millimeter screw. And then for this piece, we need a 10 millimeter this On this last one, we use a 10 millimeter spacer. Like this. So this is how you have to mount all the hardware. This needs to be, this is the horizontal line. This needs to be 90 degrees or even on the horizontal line. So not like this, but make sure like this and then fix it. This needs to be completely vertical, vertical line. So like this, this one also needs to be vertical.
yes so that's correct so now we have prepared the bracket so it, uh, it can be installed in here but before we push it back into uh, place we're going to mount the projector here it is this is the Aaron Optimus non-threaded It's a bike scene on projector, so it has a low beam and high beam. It's a 3 inch lens uh, metal holder. Here we have uh, the bike scene on wire and the bulb mounting ring. So, first, make sure that it's uh, fixed to the bracket. We're going to use the 30 millimeter spacers for this. First, let's mount the spacers. this some washers and nuts of course one two three four one two Three and last one. Number four. Let's tighten all the screws. And the nuts. So this is the entire projector assembly. Now, um, yeah, now we're going to put it in the headlight. So one, two, and three. Now it's mounted. Of course, you, need, you will need to uh, adjust your headlights again using the screws after you mount it on your car. So now the projector is mounted nice and tight. Nothing will happen to it. So next step is to mount the shroud. In this case, the customer requested the Panamera shroud with uh, with some extra functions. Actually, it has LEDs in it. So you can see here's a driver. It has uh, daytime running lights, four very bright LEDs. And it also has a dimming function. So when you switch on the low beam, the, the brightness will decrease. And this one also has an additional turn signal, switchback turn signal. So we're going to um, Demonstrate that at the end of the video, of course, we'll also show you the light output. First, let's mount this shroud. Disconnect these.
Now here you can see one, two, three, four, five notches. And here you have the same one to line up. One, two, three, four, five. So it will simply clip in there. So the wires pass. There it is. Now we need to mount the driver inside of the headlight, so we're going to use some double-sided tape in this case. Because there's more than enough room to mount it inside of the headlight. One side. sides with double-sided tape. Here's a nice flat area where it's very easy to stick it. There it is. I'll just reconnect the connectors. The black and the red wire are for the daytime running light function. Yellow and white. Yellow is positive for the dimming function and yellow is for the turn signal function. Now, of course, this is a customer specific um, request to have these shrouds with the, with the daytime running lights. There, there are other options available. So, but uh, here's how I'll, how I'll connect these wires. Uh, this is the, the, the high beam wire. This is the low beam wire. This is for the position light. In this case, the customer wants the position light to activate the daytime running lights. So what I'm going to do is I will use a T10 connector. I will um, connect these to a T10 connector and then um, uh, put it in this T10 connector so that the customer is able to uh, switch on the, the daytime running lights by activating his uh, uh, position light, uh, side light, parking light, however you call it. And then this will activate the dimming function. So this will be connected to the positive of the low beam. So that's actually this plug. And there's uh, the brown wire is the negative. And there's white and red. That is of course for the, um, the positive wire of the low beam. So this one will be connected parallel to the low beam. Um, and then there's the high beam. For that we will also make another connection. This is the, the bike xenon wire. This needs to go into the, the back of the projector. Actually, it would have been easier if I would have connected that before. Uh, I would have put it in there, the projector, but let's do it afterwards. I need a little bit more light. Yeah, it's connected. Now, since the Porsche 996 doesn't have uh, CAN bus functionality, in a sense that it checks the headlights, you can just uh, simply put new uh, spade connectors on, on these, and then just uh, 
insert to the high beam uh, wires. Um, there will be no build, build failures since this car doesn't have a checking system for that. These low beam wires will connect uh, directly to the ballast wires. Well, actually the wires which will go to the ballast. So this is for the low beam function. This will be connected to the input of the ballast. There will be an output of the ballast. That will be connected to these wires. And then this will be connected to the bulb, which will be mounted inside of the projector. I'll fix up the wiring and then uh, I'll give you another demonstration. So we're uh, wrapping up this retrofit now. Um, we decided to make one change uh, in, the, in the measurement of the spacers. So we had uh, the 50 mm spacers, we used 20 and 10 mm, but uh, we decided it was better to change the 20 and 10 to um, 30 and 20 mm. So we'll include a picture in the video so, uh, so you can see what has changed. Uh, but that's only a minor change. I'll uh, walk you through the wiring now. Um, how I connected in this case um, the wiring. So these are the wires for the uh, to activate the daytime running light. It's connected. Uh, there's a T10 connector, so it's connected to the uh, T10 output, the side precision parking light. Then um, in this case, the, uh, the customer didn't want the turn signal function uh, connected, or he has not decided yet. You, you can connect it to the turn signal that's originally installed in the headlight so that they will um, be on at the same time or you can just leave it disconnected then it will not uh, work of course <coughs> and here's the, um, the dimming uh, activating uh, activate activation wire so this uh, when this wire the, this the, these are the low beam wires when the low beam is switched on this um, will activate the dimming function of the daytime running lights so it's not too bright at night so there was a hole already in this cap this, uh, these wires uh, need to be uh, let out of the headlight because um, in, uh, in the compartment you have to mount the ballast this customer already had the uh, HID system so we had a hole already in the cap so I put the rubber inside um, these two spade connectors they go in the low beam wiring red is for positive yellow is positive black and brown for negative so the high beam i added some space spade connectors there to connect it to the high beam connector so the high beam function will also work then i will show you how to install the bulb here's the d2s bulb these projectors use d2s bulbs here's the bulb uh, mounting ring there's a little notch there, so you put it in like that. And click. Now this unit rotate it clockwise until it can't go any further until these two pins they are horizontal now then there's the D2S connector 